Uh, has joined us on the phone to talk all things uh, football. Bianca, a very cold morning out this morning, and uh, I grabbed the uh, cool runnings uh, to uh, talk about the ice because the uh, the soccer fields down here were uh, covered in uh, nice ice this morning. Oh, absolute classic, classic, classic film. Love it. Oh, yeah, I thought I might uh, try and pluck that one. I was talking to Michael about it earlier this morning, and uh, he, he suggested find it on YouTube, and I'm lucky enough to find it on there. So, uh, thank you to whoever's cut that down for us. But uh, we'll get it stuck straight into it. A uh, bit of news overnight. Um, uh, hopefully, a uh, bit of a late out for tomorrow's game. Uh, Matt's not playing tomorrow, so hopefully, he's feeling a bit better tomorrow. Yeah, we um, we had an unfortunate event where he wasn't feeling too well. Went down to the uh, hospital and. Yeah, he's been cancelled out for, for tomorrow's game and he'll be back next week. But, um, yeah, we'll sort it out. We've sorted everything out. Got some antibiotics and, yeah, he'll be all good for next week. Sounds good because he, uh, he played all right last week uh, too because uh, what a game uh, that was. Uh, uh, four all against the Eastern Lions Soccer Club down there and uh, the game kicked off uh, reasonably quickly with Craig Carley putting one away in the in the sixth minute. Uh, Neil's put one away in the 25th minute for Eastern Lions before Carley just went, oh, bugger that, and put one straight back down there a minute later mm-hmm. before um, Thomas and Neil's ran away again in the 33rd and 34th minute uh, before we managed to pluck a couple late in the game to pull it back to four all. Yeah, and I think as well, with that first goal, um, so Ethan Lyons goalkeeper now, he used to play for us, um, and that's Kyle Kennedy. So as soon as Craig looked up and seen Kyle's positioning and everything as well in that first goal, he knew. He's, in, he's played with Kyle back in Cobram, Um Known Kyle for so long, he knew straight away. He looked up and he thought, I've got him here. Um, and pinched that first goal, and it was an absolute cracker. It was first touch, top corner, chip the keeper. Beautiful goal from Craig. Um, then, with the other goals that we did cop from Eastern Lions, I think really that they've hit us on luck. It's the same thing that's happened a few times with the goals that we've that we've conceded. Um, it's hitting us on the break, getting us in a in a in a position that we're probably a little bit too open, a little bit too open to um to to mistakes, I guess. Yep, yep. So in in one chance that we had, um, you know, someone will be calling for the ball. Someone will go to pass them the ball, but by the time they go to pass it, they've moved from where they are actually standing. So they're, they're calling and they're running at the same time. So then we've we've kind of given the opposition an open angle there to kind of go, well, I'm going to take a shot, and that's exactly what happens. So it's uh, been a really interesting game uh, last week because I'm reading here, uh, he made a low quality, picked up a yellow card, uh, uh, Gapkin picked up a yellow card and uh, Eastern Lions ended up playing 10 men down uh, with 22 minutes to go. Yeah, so a low, um, he's one of those players that he's what everyone wants to see. If he loses the ball, he's, gonna, he's not going to throw his arms up and look at the referee to to get a free kick or anything like that. He's going to get back up and he's going to chase down the ball and um, and make a tackle if he needs to. So he's, he's, he's done just that and um, the referee hasn't been too happy with the, the way he's got grabbed the ball, I guess, and he's got the card there. Um, as for Adam, I'm not too sure. I can't really remember what Adam's was. That's all right. We've got a uh, a big game coming then, up tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we're taking on Nunawading City. Uh, they're yeah. currently sitting last on the ladder and uh, really struggling along with their season. We're still hovering around that uh, fourth position. Springvale White Eagles have uh, overtaken us on the ladder, but a win tomorrow might uh, sneak us back into third there. Yeah, well, Nunawading are a team who they're not really a consistently the possession game. So they're all about keeping possession, no long balls, um, playing through the midfield. 
they really do stick to their guns there. So they don't really change it up depending on what team they're playing. They want everyone to change their style against Nana Wadding. Um, so the reason why they're on the bottom of the ladder is because they're probably getting beat where they could beat others, but they're just not changing up their style. So I do think we'll have an easy win next week or tomorrow or Sunday. Yes. Yeah. Um, but um, to say easy win, I don't want our players to go in and think it's going to be easy and then them get beaten. Well, we proved that uh, a couple of weeks ago against um, yeah. Sunshine down that way. Correct. So so, we, don't need, we don't need that to happen again. No, no, we really need to be on uh, on top of our game here and uh, hopefully come away with the three points because uh, it's now do or die time at the end of the season here and uh, every point counts. Yeah, and I think at the end of it, we know that we're not going to finish on top, but we just want to finish in a better position than last year um, and Craig will be really happy with that. Pride. It's, it's all about pride now on the line and uh, the higher we can finish on the ladder, the, the more prouder the boys can be and uh, uh, of their season and uh, look back on it uh, and use it for motivation for next season as, as a moving forward goal to uh, become champions. Well, definitely. And because of his Craig's first year um, coaching, he just wants to be able to say, look, I've, I've done a good job here, um, keep the job for next year, I guess, and and push forward. Uh, I've always believed in uh, a coach should always have uh, uh, three years under his contract uh, almost straight away. Your first year, you're always finding your feet. Your second year, you're, you're starting to really get what you wanted to put in place that first year into place in the second year. And that third year, you should have everything down pat and that should be nearly your year where you go on and, and push and make it uh, a really big one. So uh, hopefully uh, in the next two to three seasons, we can uh, see Craig Carley and the boys uh, not only on top of uh, NPL2, but um, probably on top of uh, NPL1. I don't know about on top of NPL1, but I'd be happy for them to be in NPL1. Oh, uh, I'll make it sound good. Oh. <laughs> Well, uh, we'll knock off anyone. Uh, that's what we're about up here at uh, the GV Suns. We're happy to have a crack at anyone, and uh, the spirit uh, is always there right till the very end. Yeah, that's true. Bianca, the uh, 20s have been ticking along all right too. They had another good result last week, and uh, I'm sure they'll be looking forward to tomorrow's result as well. Yeah, so Joe Wall did come back last week. He um, played the last 20 minutes, I'm pretty sure. Um but it might be a little bit hard for them this week, depending on depending on who Craig decides to take up into the seniors, but he will drop some players down as well. So I have a feeling there may be a change in our back line, especially after conceding four goals. Um, but those players will get dropped down to the 20s, so that could make the 20s team a lot stronger as well. I know we did go down 1-0 last week, but that goal was in the eighth minute and it was a uh, tough contest for the rest of the game. So yeah, I can't see why we really can't uh, bounce back and uh, hit the scoreboard this week and uh, hit Nana Wadding hard. That goal last week was their only shot on target. Um, we actually did end up scoring and then uh, it was called offside. So oh. probably should have pinched a point, but... Um, yeah, definitely think the boys will do well this week. It's not bad, uh, considering we are fourth there as well, and uh, Eastern Lions are first on, on top of the ladder there. So uh, it, it's still good to uh, go down with the fight there. So hopefully uh, Nunna Wadding, who are in fifth, only just behind us on uh, 32 points. We're on 34. So uh, hopefully we can uh, either hold out a draw or, or pinch a win and uh, really separate that gap back out between us yeah. and them again. Yeah, our 20s are pretty hungry, so I, I definitely think they'll get the win. Fingers crossed for them. And uh, World Cup news, Bianca, it didn't quite uh, go the way we planned. We picked the right result uh, for the finals games, but uh, they're being played the other way around. Correct. So uh, it's going to be a big couple of nights. Uh, are you staying up to watch uh, both or either or none? I'm not going to lie. Um <laughs> <laughs> Highlights are good for me at the moment. Um, look, I, I did definitely did pick um, Belgium to be in there, but I did not expect France in the final at all, especially in the group stages. There's no way you could have said to me they're going to be in the grand final. 
I know um, we spoke, oh, I suppose, a couple of weeks ago now that, um, you know, we thought we might have been a bit on the, uh, I suppose, ordinary side is probably the, the nice way to uh, put it. But uh, if, if France can make it all the way through, we held on to France for a very long time. Uh, in that game that we played and to only go down 2-1 must mean that we weren't uh, as bad as maybe what we thought we might have been if France are playing in the final. Yes and no. I mean, at the end of the day, they also beat those other teams and we we couldn't. So um, I think if we had have made it to the next round, then I would agree with that statement. But I don't know. I don't know. I think um, we were just too green um, with a new coach in there and everything. Um some things we did right, some things we did wrong, but I think, especially when it comes down to penalties, um, we, we were probably a little bit out of our depth this World Cup. And it's uh, it's been a really big week, uh, I suppose, coming into uh, these games now. So I think last weekend coming into it, I think we spoke about Croatia knocking off Russia in uh, penalties last Sunday morning. So the uh, the semi finals took place throughout the week, and uh, I managed to uh, sneak up and uh, watch the last ten minutes of uh, the France Belgium game, and I was really disappointed. Belgium really didn't look in it for the the part that I was watching. So they uh, France snuck through one nil, and that Croatia. England England game is probably one of the uh, the better games of the tournament, and uh, I don't know if you've seen it. The uh, the Croatian commentators went absolutely bananas uh, when they put that 110th minute uh, winner in the back of the net, you know, well deep in extra time to uh, sneak up uh, two one. The thing that I love about Croatia now making it through is the Aussies have gone around them so much because we have such a large Croatian. Um, you know, investment here. Um, everyone's just just getting around, and they they and I love that. I love the fact that it it's it's still going. The Aussies are still watching. We're still we're still interested um, because that's what you need. Oh, yeah, I found an article uh, here before uh, size-wise on uh, Croatia compared to uh, a lot of the other countries that have uh, competed in here. Uh, if you look at the likes of uh, Germany, Germany's population's 20 times that of Croatia and they're out. Spain's 11 times they're out. Italy didn't even make it and they're 14 times the size of Croatia. Brazil, again, 43 times the size of Croatia and they're out. Uh, Croatia as a country... Uh, they're not even as big as uh, Sydney as a city, uh, you know, in, in terms of size. So, you know, that 4.1 million in Croatia and, and New Zealand's only 4.6 and Sydney's over 5 million people. So it, I think it uh, sums up uh, here what they're doing over there. There was somewhere in here that they've only got about uh, 130,000 players across 1,500 registered clubs in Croatia. And, you know, that just shows the talent that they've got coming out of there to go through and push on to make their first ever a World Cup final uh, and hopefully bring it home for Croatia? I think as well, the big thing is that football, soccer, it is their life over there. It is all they want to do. It's all they want to talk about. It's why they work. They work to be able to go to games. They, they just, it is in their blood. Whereas here, and it, it's not a bad thing, because we are so multicultural, we have so many different sports. We have AFL, we have rugby, we have cricket, we have tennis, and everyone's involved in all of those sports. And they do well in all of those sports. They just may not exceed like other countries do. And that's just simply because we we are invested in so many different sports compared to a country like Croatia where it would just be football, football, football. And I, I 
tell you what, I, I absolutely love stats, and I reeled off uh, a million and one stats before the A League Grand Final. And uh, the big one in uh, the World Cup is obviously the Golden Boot. Uh, Harry Kane's way out in front on uh, six goals, and the only one who stands half a chance uh, Monday morning at one a.m. to uh, overtake him is Antonio Griezmann from France, and he's on uh, three goals. So he'd have to kick four goals to uh, even think about uh, taking that one off him. Uh, I just can't see that getting done uh, there. But, uh, Bianca, who do you reckon is going to win the final and uh, what do you reckon the scoreline is going to be? I think it'll... Uh, I think it'll either be 1-0 or go to pins. Oh, which one would you like? I, I suppose there's drama. But the more drama you can get, the better, isn't it? So to see it go down to penalties would uh, be make or break nearly be a, like a fairy tale finish, I suppose, for the World Cup, wouldn't it? We've seen so much drama across the World Cup and uh, it's been the best World Cup of the modern era uh, and you can't doubt that because the games have been sensational. So would you like to see it go to penalties or would you like to see a, uh, a normal time result? Uh, everyone always does love the penalties, but I do think it's a little bit of a cheeky way to win. Um, but in saying that, I think it'll go to France, and I think that that's only because um, they've, they've they've got a bit of luck on their side. Number one, um, number two, I also think that the scoreline will be so tight because Croatia hasn't been in the situation before, I think they are literally playing for their country. And I know that every team is meant to, but it is just in a completely different... And it's like you had cool runnings on at the start. This is like their cool runnings moment. Well, France have only played in uh, uh, only a, a very handful uh, of World Cups. Uh, their only uh, World Cup win come back in 1998. So... Uh, I suppose experience uh, across, uh, oh, I suppose, World Cups it isn't uh, huge between uh, either side, but uh, I, I can't really pick a winner too much. I think I, I'm jumping on the uh, Croatian bandwagon, and uh, I, I just hope that uh, they get up and uh, add their name to a, only a list of a very small handful of uh, title winners. Yeah, that would be that. That would be the best result, I think. I just, I don't know. I don't know. It could be a, uh, a real fine one. I, I found uh, all the stats here for the World Cup so far. Coming into it, we've uh, got 161 goals scored right across the tournament. Uh, 213 yellow cards, only the four red cards. They've uh, had 47,902 passes completed at an average of 2.96 goals uh, per match and 772.6 passes per match. So uh, I think that says a lot that the uh, World Cup has been uh, very exciting. Oh, definitely. There's no way that you could say that anyone would have picked these two teams in the grand final at the start. And, um, and yeah, it's definitely going to be an interesting one. It's also got here that uh, the best defending team so far is Croatia with uh, 272 clearances, tackles and saves as a combined stat. So that's uh, a really big one there. So fingers crossed that they can uh, get over the line there. Yeah, and that can, that's an interesting one too because having the mo- that just tells me that their, their midfield's not as strong. So they're, they're breaking through the midfield and their back line's having to do a lot of the work and their keepers having to do a lot of the work. Let's hope they can keep it up um, in the final. Fingers crossed. Bianca, thank you very much for chatting this morning. Anything else going on in football news around uh, the GV or around the world that you can think of? Um, the oh. only other thing that I can think of is if you are um, in Shepparton tomorrow and you're looking for a game to go to, the ones that I would suggest are, if I can get it up on my screen here, I've got Shepherd and South playing Golden City at 3 o'clock at McEwen Reserve and Shepherd and the Soccer Club playing Moama Chuka Border Raiders 3 o'clock at Vibert Reserve. So if you'd like to... Oh, and we've got Datura playing here locally as well. They've got Shep United at home. So that's a big one there. Um, but yeah, if you're around the area, we've got all three teams playing 
um, locally tomorrow, so get down and watch them. Make sure we get out there and support them. And uh, down to Nana Wadding, if you came for a Sunday drive to uh, support the GV Suns. That's it. That's the way we like it. Bianca, thank you for another very good morning, and uh, hopefully Matt's feeling better soon. Thanks very much. See ya. See ya. Ladies and gentlemen, Bianca Cucinata talking all things football.